Hello everyone, Tanulis here from Spiral Shell Defensive Arts and I hope you're having a lovely day so far. Today we're going to be looking at some tools that I've either used in the past or I use currently in various scenarios and some that I recommend to others whenever I was teaching beginners workshops before quarantine. So we're going to start with this flashlight that I don't know the name brand of but I'm going to look it up and I'm going to put it underneath here. This is not a paid spot, but I do 100% want to recommend this as an extremely well-made piece of equipment. It has a steel body and a waterproof seal on the back here. And I would assume also that it's waterproof on this side too. I've, I've dealt with this in extremely varied climates. I've had it um, extremely cold um, in the negatives, definitely below negative 20. Uh, I've had it in extreme heat and extreme humidity. Uh, it's even gotten wet a couple times during the rain. Uh, additionally, I think it's great uh, because it has a strobe feature. And if you happen to use it in home defense, if you're securing a sidearm, the strobe feature works extremely well and it's extremely efficient. Whew, it's really bright. I don't know how bright it is, but I wouldn't want to be standing on the other end of this if it was an emergency. The reason why it's added into, it's included in this category is that it's a great fist stabilizer if you have nothing else and it's an immediate access thing if you had it. Checking out the uh, reliable old Sharpie here. In the past, I when I ran beginner's workshops before quarantine, I would use these. Uh, this would be the first thing that I would teach after the people would uh, learn most of the wood song form. Because the movements from these translate perfectly from just normal self-defense situations. And you can do, you can generate a lot of force onto a small point. For beginners, that's great because you don't want to, uh, sometimes not everybody has the best form to create extremely uh, devastating hits. But this, it's cheap, it's easy to get, and I was able, I, I haven't even, I haven't bothered to take out the ink because you can, it has an alternative use if you are sparring with your friends. One person can be the knife user, supposedly. As long as you guys are bear, both wearing like white t-shirts, use a red or a black sharpie, and uh, you can have one knife attacker to, to train on their offense, and the defender can be uh, trying to disarm the sharpie from the attacker. And uh, if you do get hits, any hits are clearly seen on the t-shirt. It's good for uh, retroactively going back and saying, oh, how, how did I do? You know, not everybody thinks about that in the moment. So it's a great training tool overall. I usually carry a little bag of these, like 30 or 40 of them, in case, you know, we sometimes we burn through them and sometimes people take them home. Uh, moving on, this is one of the two items, or one of the two pens that I take with me. Uh, hiking. This is exceptionally light, so it doesn't really matter. It's not much of a weight issue. But this is a anti-gravity pen that I got from the dollar store a number of years ago. It is not terribly, uh, it wasn't terribly useful in the pen department because uh, the ink ended up leaking out shortly after I got it. So I took the ink out, a well-made, I guess it's hard plastic, and it's got a metal clip on it. But it, it was great for either being on, um, if you you could take it out in public, I guess, if you wanted to hang it on your shirt. Uh, but this is this was used on the very front of my chest rig next to this one. This is my main one. Um, sort of a, like a redundancy. Wanted to get into another interesting one. This is not a non-lethal tool. I got this at a... Uh, I ended up picking this up some years ago at a survival... Not a survival convention, but it was at a, a convention that had... Uh, it was a tattoo and gun show. It was pretty cool. At this, one of the booths that I went to had a survival booth, and you're able to get knives like this. Now, this is, let's see if I can read off this here. It's kind of tiny. Stainless steel UC0110. Now, I'm not sure of the quality of that type of metal. I'm not much, I don't work with metal. I'm a woodworker, but if anyone knows, hit that comment and let me know if, if it's any type of uh, substantially good material. I would, I would err on the side of it not being too terribly durable because it seems like a, uh, seems like a tool that I would use in an emergency, like a self-defense situation emergency, maybe as a, I don't know, like a third redundancy at home. Uh, but otherwise, I couldn't really ponder another use for it. A little on the brutal side, not something that I really would take with me in public, but it was something that I kept as a novelty in my storage, and I thought I'd share it with you today. Finally, I have my favorite Coupaton, the one that I, I, I've harvested this from a, um, a small buck that shed its antlers some years ago. I was out walking and found it sitting at the base of a tree and decided to take it home. And I didn't immediately do anything with it, but um, probably three or four years ago, I 
cut the edge off here, and then we, uh, a friend of mine and I, filed filed it down. And it's got a quite a nice little counterbalance to it. Now another thing that I really like is that it has a you can anchor it sort of in your hand here, grab it, and you sort of have a a nice little extension if you're doing some type of like using it as a defense mechanism as a, a goring tool it, it, there's nothing better really but it also works well trapping limbs and things like that if you're if you're trying to do it use it non-defensively so i had the option I, I do have a drill i could have put holes in here uh, two holes to hold a string to make it into a capo stick to give it more of a secure grip but really i, I think it's more of a i think it's more of a work of art and i really don't want to damage it any further uh, one other thing I do like to mention is that um, perhaps this buck was in a sparring match with another in the with another buck in the past. I'm not a deer hunter. Being vegetarian, I really have no use for hunting them. I guess this blood here kind of gives a, a bit of a history for this piece, and I really enjoyed it, and I didn't really want to damage it at all. So if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button if you'd like to see more. In the future, I'll be doing some videos about my backpacking setup. Uh, during quarantine, we've been in here at the house. I've been the only one able to go out and get stuff for the family, so keeping everybody safe. And whenever that's over, or at least when things like to get a little bit better, I really want to get out for some more multi-day hikes, and I want to show you guys some of that gear that for that setup. I've been burning up the day hikes almost every day. I've had some really good wild edible harvests, too, in the past couple weeks, and I'm excited about that. Uh, but soon. Soon I'll be able to get into some multi-day hikes, and I'm excited to show you some of that equipment. So if that's something you'd like to see in the future, stick around. Thank you so much. Have a great day.